Hello everyone, welcome to day 14th of my lead code challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanjay Dodeja, I am working as technical architect SD4 at Adobe and today I present day 683 of daily lead code problem. The question that we have in today is network delay time. Here in this question we are given a graphical structure containing nodes and the nodes ID can start from 1 goes up till n. Along with this we are also given a times array. It has three parameters in it. The first one is the source index, the second one is the target index and the third one is the time it takes to send the signal from the source to the target. What we need to do, we need to identify the total time it takes for all the nodes to receive the signal and the starting point of the signal is also given as in the equation which is k. If it is not possible for all the nodes to receive the signal, we should return minus one in those cases. Here they have provided us with an example. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it via the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Lead code 743 network delay time. It's a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded. Both the links are stated in the description below. So do check them out. Now let's get started with an example. I slightly changed that example so that you get a good hold of the concept. And the first and the foremost thing that we are going to do in this question is to build this graph appropriately. So let's start and build this graph. From 2, we can see how many nodes are originating. We can see there is a connection up till 1 and the cost associated is also 1. So 1 comma 1. The first value signifies the target node and the second value signifies the cost associated with it. So let's create another edge connection. Next we see there is a connection between 2 and 3. So the cost associated here is 2 units. So let's write this up 2 comma 3. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see a connection between 2 and 5. The cost is 1. So let's go ahead and write it up 5 comma 1. Let's proceed ahead. Next, I can see connections starting from 5 up till 3. So let's write it up. We have starting from 5, we have a connection up till 3 and the cost associated is 1 unit. So let's write it up. From 3, I can see a connection up till 1. From 3, I can see a connection up till 1 and the cost associated is also 1. And again, I can see a connection from 3 up till 4. So there is another connection starting from 3, ending at 4 and the cost associated is 1. So far so good. Now we have appropriately built the graph. How many edges are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Awesome. Perfect. What I'm going to do, I'll be using the Jigstra algorithm in order to solve this question. And remember, in the Jigstra algorithm, it's nothing special. It's the regular BFS and instead of using a queue there we use priority queues so that uh, whenever we are pulling out elements from the queue there is a calculated decision that can be taken and that is usually on the basis of cost associated for reaching from one node to the another and as per the question since the question itself says minimum so we will shoot for creating a minimum priority queue or a mini heap. so remember out of all the elements that are present in that priority queue whenever you will pull out elements the one with the lowest cost will be pulled out first so this is a takeaway now let's get started along with this what i'm gonna create i'm gonna create a visited array which will tell us whether this node has been seen in the past or not so let's create this visited array and how many nodes do we have one two three four five so let's write one two three four and five now let's get started. Let's assume that the value of k that was specified in the equation happens to be 2. That simply means that we are going to start our iteration from the second node. So what we are going to do, we'll simply go ahead and add in our priority queue 2 and the cost to reach this particular node happens to be 0. So for reaching this particular node, the cost so far is 0. So let's write 0 over here. And along with this, what we are going to do, we'll create the total time variable, let's call it TT and initialize it to 0 by default.
So let's start the iteration. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull out the element from the priority queue. There's only one single element. So this elements get pulled out. And what do we see? We see that the current node ID is two. So what we are gonna do, we'll simply go ahead and mark this node as visited. So this gets this node gets marked as visited. So let's write true here. And along with this, what we will simply update the total cost. The total cost for visiting this particular node would be equal to the current cost plus the cost associated over here, which is zero. So zero plus zero is zero. So far, so good. The total cost remains same as zero. Now it's time to do insertions into the priority queue. So what all edges do you see here? You see here three edges, one, two, and three. So we can get this information from the graph that we have built. So what we are going to do, we'll simply add those edges into the priority queue. While adding those edges, there is one important point to note that we will calculate the total cost for reaching its child node from that edge. So what I'm trying to say, starting from two, what is the cost for reaching one? How can you calculate it? The cost for reaching two is zero. So zero plus one gives you one. Therefore you will add one comma one into the priority queue. That signifies that the cost for reaching one from the second node is one unit. So let's write one here as well. Let's proceed ahead. The next edge is five and the cost for reaching five from two is also one unit. So let's write one here as well and let's make the insertion. So five comma one gets added into the priority queue. Next we have is three. So the cost for reaching three starting from two happens to be two units. So zero plus two gives you two. So let's write two. So three, three comma two gets added into the priority queue and this element is gone. Along with this, we'll also mark this ele element as visited. So this element gets updated to true, true, because it has been visited. Let's proceed ahead. Uh, let's pull out elements on the priority queue. Which element will be pulled out? The one that has lowest cost. So one comma one will be pulled out or the second unit is five comma one. Either of these two can be pulled out. So let's hypothetically assume that one comma one gets pulled out. So this element is gone. And what you are gonna check, you'll check whether this element was visited in the past or not. It wasn't visited. That means you're visiting this node for the very first time. Therefore, the total time taken variable gets updated and it would be updated to the maximum of total time comma the current node that you are visiting, the time taken to visit the current node. So which is one So out of zero and one, which is the maximum one it turns out to be one. So this gets updated to one and there are no more edges originating from one as a result of it. This element is gone and no more insertions are made. So let's continue the process. Uh, next we see is five comma one. So five comma one gets pulled out. So this is gone. What we are going to do, we will check whether five is visited in the past or not. Five was not visited in the past as a result of which we will mark this node as visited. And along with this, we will check what is the total cost for reaching five. The total cost for reaching five is one unit. The total time taken so far is also one. So out of one and one, which one is the maximum one? One still remains the maximum one. So we are pretty safe over there. Along with this, what we should do, we should make an insertion of all the outbound edges originating from five. So which edge originate from five? Three comma one. Three comma one originates from five. Therefore, we will calculate the total time taken to reach the three, the third node. What that no would be equal to? It would be equal to the, to the time taken to reach the current node, which is one plus the time taken to reach three from five, which is one unit again. So one plus one gives you two as a result of which we will make an insertion into the priority queue stating that for reaching three by the five fifth parent is two units. So for reaching three, the total time taken happens to be two units. Let's continue the process. And the next element that we see in the priority queue happens to be three comma two. So by both the virtues, the value remains the same. So any node can be pulled out. So let's pull out three comma two. And again, we will do the same thing. We will check and compare it with the total time taken value. It is one so far. So out of two and one, which one is the maximum one? Two is the maximum one. So let's update it up. And uh, since three gets pulled out, what we, what we should do, we should mark this node as visited to true. And along with this, we should check what all edges originate from three. So what all edges originate from three? It is one comma one and four comma one. 
so if you see carefully one has already been visited in the pass so we will skip this node entirely so we will not calculate its cost the other node that we have is 4 comma 1 therefore we will calculate the total cost to reach 4 from node 3 that what that would be equal to it would be equal to 1 plus 2 so 1 plus 2 gives you 3 as a result of which we will go ahead and make an insertion into the priority queue for 4 comma 3 so 4 comma 3 gets added into the priority queue and uh, we have successfully marked 3 as visited so let's continue the process next we see is 3 comma 2 again since 3 is already visited let's skip it entirely the last node that we see is 4 comma 3 so let's do the same thing again let's compare it with the total time variable it is 2 and here it is 3 therefore we will update it up to the maximum value so this gets updated to 3 and along with this what we should do we should mark 4 as visited 4 also gets updated to true and uh, there is no more no node originating from 4 so we are done with the iteration and here the priority queue also goes empty in the end if you carefully see you have visited all the nodes that were present in your graph 1 2 3 and 4 that means you were so you have successfully you were successfully able to visit all the nodes and the total cost variable turns out to be 3 which is in sync with our expectation this 3 value signifies that it will take 3 units of time to send signals starting from 2 to all the nodes and this is what is expected as the answer to let's quickly walk through the coding section now and conclude the approach i'll be using the same steps as i have just talked here in the coding part 2 so let's quickly hop on to it here i have created the node class and it has two attributes in it the first property is a target index and the second one is the distance so i'll be using this node in order to do all my ma manipulations over my priority queue so the generic type of the priority queue is of type node and i have created a min heap over here so remember this is important to create min heap on the basis of distance going ahead i have created my graph or map and uh, it is basically a map of index integer comma set of nodes so it will store the source index that means starting from this source id and uh, these are the connections that exist in my graph so connections that exist in the graph moving ahead i've also created a visited array that will also store those indexes that have been seen in the past moving ahead i have made a default insertion that signifies for reaching the target value k zero cost is needed so k was also specified in the question now let's proceed ahead i have created a total time variable initialize it to zero while my queue is not empty i what do i do extract size typical way of writing the bfs approach while size minus minus is greater than zero i pull out the topmost element from the priority queue which will be the one that has least time associated with it or least distance what you can say as you, uh, now next thing i'm gonna check whether it's part of the visited set or not if it's part of the visited set i'll simply skip the iteration further otherwise i go ahead and add that element into my visited set i update my total time to the maximum time that i have seen so far so it would be equal to total time is math dot max of total time comma head dot distance and again i'll check whether in case my size of the visited sets has turned out to be equal to n that means i've seen all the nodes that exist in my graph what should i do i should simply return the total time variable because i've seen each and every node otherwise i'll proceed ahead i'll check whether my target node is part of my map or not if it is part of my map then i extract all its connections that means all its edges and starting from target dot head so i'll calculate the total time taken to reach that child node it would be equal to children dot distance plus plus head dot distance and once i have that value what do i do i add it back into the priority queue so i'm creating a new node the target would be children dot target this will be the id and this will be the total time taken once i'm done with this i'm and, and, and out of the loop i check uh, if the control goes up till here that simply means i am not able to visit all the nodes that exist in my graph i should return minus one in those cases this helper method is pretty straightforward we have done it plenty of times in the past and you'll be able to follow this is just creating the graph using the times array so let's submit this up 
accepted uh, 14 times i think this is the best possible approach in which this question can be solved and with this let's conclude today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question your friend your mentor your catalyst in this journey of yours sanjay tudeja signing off